Yesterday, many of you who live along our coast probably saw tugboats pulling the barge bridge port along our coast for several hours as they prepared to take it to port. The barge had been stuck off the coast of Mayport for three months. Just this week, the Department of Environmental Protection released its much anticipated results of samples taken of the sand and water around the barge. Remember, the barge was carrying 12,000 tons of coal ash from Puerto Rico. We know at least 9,300 tons leaked into the ocean when it became stranded. Marine biologist Dr. Quinton White from Jacksonville University is joining us via Zoom this morning. Dr. White, when we first talked to you about two weeks ago, you were concerned about the impact of this coal ash on the marine life. Given that you've now had an opportunity to see the DEP samples and let's first talk about the sand in particular. Are you worried? Uh, not anymore. Um, great sense of relief. Um, happily, pleasantly surprised. So that said, we know that 44 points on the sea floor were part of this sample, 17 pits along the shoreline. I want to point that out to our viewers so that they understand that this isn't just directly the area around the barge, but also a little bit along the shoreline there, kind of near the jetties, uh, for anybody who might have been concerned. Uh, but let's talk a little bit, if we could. I know you're a marine biologist, so bear with me here. But DEP also took water samples from near the bridge port, and those actually exceeded EPA standards for barium and boron. On. Given that and what you know about those two, um, you know, chemicals or minerals, I should say, should people who swim in the water along Atlantic Beach, you think, worry about those levels since they're higher than EPA likes? Um, I'm not a public health official, but I don't think so. Um, this was generally a good news report. And RPI, the, the group that did the study, uh, appeared to do a very thorough job. You can always do more. Um, you know, there's some other tests you could have done, but what they did was a fairly standard look at the water quality and the sediment in the area. And that in turn gave me a great sense of relief. And, and also perhaps hearing that um, from you perhaps gives a sense of relief because for those who've been following very closely who live along the coast and you're seeing now this barge going, you know, all the way down to Jack's Beach and back for several hours yesterday and you're wondering, is any more of that coal ash leaking out as it's going along the, it, it seemed very close close to the, to the surf yesterday. Maybe people were worried and you're saying that they shouldn't be. I don't think so. What was happening yesterday was the Coast Guard required that the company tow the barge for five hours at five knots to make sure that they could tow it and control it before they allow it to bring to be coming into the port. Um, they, they need to bring the barge into Jacksonville to get it repaired. Um, but the report on the material was was very good in the grand scheme of things. Um, it turns out the Agrimax, they in fact analyzed every load as it gets put in. So what was also released yesterday was the analysis of the load itself. And apparently there were 14,300 tons of this material on the barge. And they had, I think, five different analysis at different stages of loading. Um, none of those showed any elements of concern. And I'm sort of surprised they didn't release that early because they had they could have reduced our anxiety quite a bit by simply releasing that, releasing that information. But I do applaud DEP for quickly releasing the RPI report. I think that was a very, very good move. And, and given that uh, new information also, Doctor, then um, we, we know that uh, we spoke with a reporter in Puerto Rico who's followed this Agrimax and the, and the coal fire plant very closely, who expressed concerns to us about should a hurricane or a tropical storm, uh, you know, come in the area and perhaps some of this coal ash somehow could make it onto our beaches. Is that something we need to be worried about then in terms of a, a, a potential health issue? I don't think so right now. Um, it appears the material was very fine. That was one of the, when I say fine, I'm talking about very small particles. Um, and I, this is one of the tests I wish that they had run on the, uh, the Agrimax material that we would have known what the particle size was. It appears that it was dissipated pretty readily by the wind and the current or the currents and the waves and the tide. Um, they even talked about the strong current in the area as they were sampling. So I think it's been dissipated pretty well. Um, but this, this does sort of open up the discussion that we've had earlier about all of this material coming into Jacksonville. This particular batch was pretty benign, but that doesn't mean every batch is. And so I would like to see more information released uh, when these things are coming into port so we knew what was going on. And I'm sure that that conversation is going to continue to be had given the fact that uh, what happened as we watch this. Dr. Quentin White, thank you for your time this morning. We really appreciate your perspective. It sounds like a collective sigh of relief.
Exactly. I, I spent some time talking to DEP and they had they had the same concerns we did early on. So we were not alone. Dr. White, thanks for your time again. Appreciate it. Thank you.